ice forming dunes of about 33 degrees maximum slope. To evaluate the test bed vehicle performance, the first step was to make a series of soil measurements using a portable hand-operated field instrument similar in principle to the laboratory soil test device shown earlier. Since one of the most important measures of a vehicle's mobility performance is its drawbar pull capability, a drawbar load was provided by a weighted sled and then towed by the test bed vehicle. The drawbar pull was then recorded as a function of the wheel slip. This was followed by a maneuverability test run on the sand dunes to study the vehicle's slope climbing capability, steering performance, and ability to negotiate obstacles. Here, a steering test on the top of the dune is shown. The steering commands are given by radio remote control. To study the difficulties of controlling a lunar vehicle from Earth, the remote control system has a time delay of three seconds. This corresponds to the transmission time required for signals from Earth to Moon and back. The radio receiver is mounted on the middle unit. The power sources are a set of lightweight batteries distributed on the front and rear units to achieve a balanced vehicle weight. The vehicle is shown here climbing a slope of approximately 33 degrees, which corresponds to the angle of repose of this loose sand. Actually, it ought to be impossible to negotiate this slope, since theoretically any force applied to the soil would start it flowing rearward. However, the high slip of these wheels removes enough of the soil material to momentarily reduce the slope, permitting forward motion. The extreme temperatures and bombarding meteorites of the lunar environment would make pneumatic tires undesirable. So, flexible spring wire wheels are used on the testbed vehicle. This construction permits the wheels to deflect like low-pressure pneumatic tires. The spring rate effect of the wheels is about 10 pounds per inch. With low wheel loading, this results in a ground pressure of about one-tenth of a PSI, making for good flotation characteristics and, in general, for excellent soft ground crossing ability. Another likely terrain condition on the moon, according to various investigators, is a rugged, rocky surface, such as that encountered on volcanic regions. The terrain shown here is a crater of volcanic origin, in which the soil consists of a jumbled mass of pumice blocks that range in size from a baseball to a truck. The pumice material has been subjected to very little weathering, and the rocks on the surface are loose and easily dislodged. The angle of the slope ranges from about 25 to 35 degrees. The Dacron fabric which covers the wheels is tough but flexible, so that the spring wires protrude slightly like tire lugs and grip the terrain. This field obstacle test was planned to consist of one long maneuver to be accomplished from slope to slope of this volcanic crater. In air, the distance from rim to rim is about 500 yards. The soft wheels tend to envelop small obstacles, reducing the shock transmitted to the vehicle frame and reducing somewhat the energy which would be required to surmount them.
The test bed vehicle, as shown in these tests, weighs 66 pounds. On the moon, 330 pounds of payload could be added. Yet, because of the low gravity conditions there, the vehicle could be expected to perform in just the same way. Natural obstacles often showed up which tended to imitate those provided in the laboratory. They helped demonstrate again the vehicle's ability to cross chasms and to successfully climb the large natural obstacles of rugged terrain. If the lunar surface is indeed either very soft or very rugged, it well may be that a lunar roving vehicle based on this concept will be suitable. Yeah.